These guys didn't ask me to come in and consult with them about innovation of their product, but they're creative and they're open-minded and very generous with their time and their energy to say, oh yeah, that's like a weird idea. It's interesting, let's give it a try. All right, let's see if we can get, up, get you across here without getting the camera hit. How's it going? Hey, good job. Pretty excited about uh, checking out the Colby. I knew that Colby was uh, kind of uh, the first cheese to be invented in Wisconsin and developed here, and I wanted to try to like somehow innovate a new cheese out of Colby. And um, actually, I just walked in off the street here uh, in February, and I met Bob. I, you know, I, I said I had a cheese idea. He said, "What is it?" And I told him to do a double cream version of. Colby and he was like, uh, yeah, we could do it, it's, it's doable. And that's uh, what we're tasting today. Well, it's awesome. It's super mild like, um, like the typical Colby, but it definitely it has, has a lot a, of buttery flavor yeah, to it. Yeah, it definitely has like yeah. a creamy, yeah, a creamy buttery flavor. And I, and I can't wait to see how it pairs with your beer. My career kind of started through getting great pleasure from seeing things. That actually at a young age evolved into more conceptual artwork and a lot of the uh, art that I'm really interested in, it's idea first. And then it uses basically different other forms, whatever form comes naturally or whatever form best supports the ideas. So uh, food was a natural um, evolution from there. And for me, uh, growing up in Milwaukee, there weren't like a ton of models for me of like what an artist could be. John is um, of Milwaukee. He seems like this, this artist who has a presence far beyond Milwaukee, but is very devoted to what's going on here. And his work is more of, I think, a platform for involving other artists in his work and collaborating with, with non-artists or, or uh, cheesemakers, beer, beer brewers, and raising funds to support other people, which I think is very interesting. As I'm getting more attention regionally for my art, I wanted to be able to show the next generation that you know there's expansive ideas of what art can actually look like. And so as you walk into Innova, none of the art of mine will be on the walls. It'll just be in the, the spaces that are normally dedicated to the infrastructure of the gallery that we take for granted. Uh, maybe a cheese plate and some beers that are typically offered at a, a, an opening reception. So there's a, a little bit of an irony here is that um, there's, a, there's a sign on between this lobby area and the gallery that says no food or drinking allowed in the gallery. And there's a, there isn't really a clause about if the food or drink is actually art, that it, it can go through, it can't. <laughs> the cheese tray, uh, by design, it's kind of uh, in the shadows in a way, and uh, people are tasting the double cream Colby for the first time ever, so. So remember, extra rich, extra buttery. Beer elements, it's pretty layered. When I started the Green Gallery um, 11 years ago, I brewed all my own beer for the openings, but as the gallery kind of got more established, um, I was able to try to brainstorm ways of brewing with other brewers. The beer endowment is Georgia Company Brewing It and I, we, we were designing and producing beer and a percentage of all the sales go towards um, these artist-run organizations. There are three original beer endowment beers are the Green Gallery IPA. Um, the Poor Farm Pilsner is based on an artist-run Kunsthalle style space in central Wisconsin. There's another beer called the Friends of Blue Dress Park Mild Porter. So all these beers are beers that we're trying to make taste incredible because without making great beer, you know, we can't expect to have a great endowment. <laughs> this, is a, this is a pretty good series. People drinking at the bar over a nice pint of um, Poor Farm Pilsner. That's good. Uh, so I'm going to actually finish packing the rest of the truck uh, with my art show and then uh, take off in the early morning for New York.
This will be my second solo show with Marlboro Chelsea. And they're based in New York, and um, it's called Group Show, a solo show by John Riepenhoff. There's a lot of work that looks like it's made by a lot of different artists. I made all the work myself, but um, the ideas for the art were inspired by other artists that I've worked with and that have impressed upon me. But a big part of that show, I'll also be giving away uh, Every Bean Chili, which is a new chili that I developed. And uh, there's every known edible bean that I could find. Uh, there's 104 beans in it. And then there'll also be a Double Cream Colby, which will be both a topping on Every Bean Chili and also um, people will be able to taste it on the side as uh, just a sample of the flavor of the cheese itself. Wisconsin makes the best cheese. I like the little logo and the little funny name. That's a cheese cream with a little bit of oh. personality. <laughs> There'll also be beer that uh, Company Brewing uh, made for the beer endowment. So this will be kind of a New York debut of these beers. Good to see you, yeah. Hey, we're uh, sampling the uh, beer endowment. Is, is the beer an artwork, or is the is the beer an artwork, or is the is the transaction an artwork? We are trying to have the beer itself represent, uh, like conceptually, the structure of these artist-run organizations. Yeah, you know, like how each tap handle has been an opportunity to like engage with an artist. And, and this actually is part of the the concept of this artist-run organization is that it takes something that we normally don't even look at, like asphalt, and it's transforming it into to some other use for our world. And also to get put money into the hands of these artists and organizations, which nobody else is doing, you know, it's like, it's pretty radical. So in some ways, like a Midwesterner bringing out chili and beer and cheese to New York is kind of a, maybe a cliched stereotype. But I think a lot weirder stuff that's been done. There's been a lot of artists that have used food as a way to talk about place and culture and community. So I, I think that um, they're going to think it tastes really great, and it's kind of an experiment. What do you, what's your feeling about cans? Because like, I see that craft brew now is coming yeah. in cans a lot. I really like them. They stay colder. They that's seem to like keep the beer fresher. I mean, we're trying to make really quality beers, but I mean, ideally, we want to go into cans. We, I'd love it to be as as larger distribution as possible. So this is the advent of a project. I mean, this is like, this is the infancy of a project. And, and ideally, you know, this, is, this could be a populist thing. And, you know, it's a way of thinking about supporting culture. Over this course of the winter, I, I really wanted to go into full production and um, distribute the beer to different restaurants and bars, and also galleries and um, museums. So the beer kind of exists both in a place that's just purely about drinking beer, and also promotes these kind of obscure art spaces. It's really nice looking can. First canned beer we've ever had in the company. Let's put that one right there for drinking later. So you can put that here outside. Yeah. Let's go to the poor farm. And I'll pass them out. Last year's we always brought kegs up there, so this, this is more camping friendly. The idea that actually beer can be art isn't necessarily a new idea, but what's really unique about it, partially about the relationship uh, with company brewing, is that the beer itself um, can be you know, a supporting mechanism for art.